Frederick Catherwood, an English artist, architect, and explorer, is best remembered for his meticulously detailed drawings of the ruins of the Mayan civilization. He explored Central America in the mid-19th century with writer John Lloyd Stevens, an American explorer, writer, and diplomat. Their books, Travel Incident in Central America, Chiapas and Yucatan, and Tourism Incident in Yucatan, were bestsellers and introduced the Western world to the ancient Mayan civilization. Catherwood, who made several trips to the Mediterranean between 1824 and 1832 to paint monuments built by the Egyptians, Carthaginians, and Phoenicians. He stated that monuments in the Americas bore no architectural resemblance to monuments in the Old World. Catherwood visited Greece, Turkey, Egypt, and Palestine, and with Joseph Bonomai the Younger, made drawings and watercolors of ancient ruins there. Stevens and Catherwood returned to the Yucatan for further trips. Further exploration in 1943 and the following year, Catherwood published Views of the Ancient Monuments of Central America, Chiapas, and Yucatan in 1841 with 25 colored lithographs from watercolors he had made at various sites, different accumulations. Catherwood's drawings and lithographs clearly show that the Maya were the author of some of the most artistic and intellectual works of pre-Columbian America. Besides major architectural works, they also created exquisite works of art, such as stone and plaster sculptures, frescoes, painted ceramics, and wooden reliefs. Based on their findings, Stevens and Catherwood convincingly argued that the Maya built ancient cities in Central America, contrary to the theory that ethnic groups from European civilizations or Asia built them. Experiencing a rich history, Mesoamerica is a rich land where terrain and climate blend to create a mystical picture of nature and culture. Under the talented hands of Mother Nature, Mesoamerica is blessed with fertile red soil, majestic mountains and majestic seas, creating a promised land that captivates tourists and indigenous residents of the country. This place, Mesoamerica, located in the eastern and central United States, stretches from central Mexico to Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, and northern Costa Rica. It is not only a flat plain, but also includes complex, diverse, and equally dangerous terrain elements. The mountain ranges are hidden like background paintings, creating a feeling of solidity and sacredness. The mountain ranges are winding like Picasso paintings. In places like the Andes in the west, mountain ranges soar, with their peaks covered in white snow, creating a majestic picture of natural beauty. Highlands like the Altiplano in Mexico and Guatemala are located between mountain ranges, creating open spaces and rich habitats. As we move away from those majestic mountains, we enter vast plains and captivating coastal areas. The plain is where large rivers such as the Usumacinta River and Grijalva River flow through, creating rich, fertile red soil that is very convenient for farming. Beaches like the Yucatan Peninsula, with soft white sand and turquoise waters, are fun places for adventure and relaxation. In the coastal and highland regions, the tropical forest opens up like a real garden. Ancient trees support a vivid picture of life where rare animals like succulents live. This place is a rich furnace of flora and fauna where biodiversity contributed to the prosperity and wonder of Mesoamerica. Mesoamerica is not only a place with a diverse terrain, but also a place with rich and unique climates for each region. Some regions, such as the Yucatan Peninsula and the West Coast, have a humid, tropical climate with distinct dry and rainy seasons. Warm sunshine, coupled with cool rain, create the ideal environment for the growth of tropical forests and rich coastal life. In highland and mountainous areas, the climate can change from humid tropical to subtropical. The different seasons create unique fluctuations, with cool breezes and fresh air, especially in winter, for high mountain areas like Chiapas and the Mexican highlands, you can expect a variety of climates, from extremely cold in the winter to warm and sunny in the summer. This makes Mesoamerica a unique natural climate museum where you can experience the feeling of four seasons in one day. Mesoamerica is not only a place of amazing natural beauty, but also a journey through the history and culture of its rich peoples. 
With its rich terrain and climate, this place is a meeting point of diversity, creating a never-ending adventure, immersing yourself in the beauty and wonder of Mother Nature. Miso America's nature is beautiful and home to many species of creatures, so this place is also extremely dangerous to enter, even for the most talented explorers. Threats are always present because of small creatures ready to spread disease. Large predators can lurk anytime we are careless, and certainly, this place is not easy. To move because of large forests that can disorient us at any time. Deadly swamps and poisonous mushrooms. I wonder, with such a dangerous land, can people live and develop in this place? And the answer is yes, people since ancient times have always been able to adapt and live appropriately, no matter what the surrounding environment is. Today, please join me in discovering one of the most famous Maesteru civilizations in the world, Maya. We will learn about the secrets of the Mayans, who they are, what is so special about them, that so many people are willing to go far through Dangaru's forest to find out and why we got gay a great civilization, and such a long time ago it collapsed. Let's start the journey. Rain. Rain is always a good sign for creatures. Rain provides water for growth, providing habitat for many species to grow. After the rain, the tropical forest appears more alive and fresh than ever. Sunlight shines through the dense layer of clouds, creating a mix of light and shade on the wet ground. Under the shade of the tree, the fresh green leaves have been water red, larger and more sparkling in the new sunlight. The rain has created small streams and clear streams of water flowing through natural paths, making the space more lively and fresh than ever. Looming through the large trees of the forest, there was the faint silhouette of a large pyramid. Overcoming the rugged terrain of the forest, Going further in, surprisingly, it was actually a pyramid, located in the middle of a forest. There are many other architectural works, tombs, and stone buildings around 200 BC. There is no doubt that these are very special architectural works of the ancient Maya. The Maya are an indigenous people of Mexico and Central America who have continuously inhabited lands, including Yucatan, Quintana Roo, Campeche, Tabasco, and Chiapas in present-day Mexico and south through all of Guatemala, Belize, El Salvador, and Honduras. The name Maya comes from the ancient Yucatan city of Mayapan, the last capital of the Maya kingdom during the post-classical period, before the Spanish conquest of Mexico and Central America. The Maya possessed one of the greatest civilizations in the Western Hemisphere. They farmed, built great stone buildings and pyramid temples, worked gold and bronze, and used a form of hieroglyphics that has now largely been deciphered. The Maya made paper from the inner bark of the wild fig tree and wrote their hieroglyphs on books made from this paper. Those books are called codices. The Maya also developed a tradition of intricate and beautiful carving and carving. Architectural structures, inscriptions, and rock reliefs are the main sources of knowledge about the early Mayan period. Early Mayan culture shows the influence of the earlier Olmec civilization. The history of Central America is often divided into many different periods, each period having certain cultural influences on the following periods. We can mention the prominent periods in Central America as follows. There's Olmec period. This era is also known as the pre-classical period or the formative period when the Olmec, the oldest culture in Mesoamerica, thrived. The Olmecs settled along the Gulf of Mexico and began building large cities out of stone and brick. The vast size and scope of the Olmec ruins gave rise to the idea that the land was once inhabited by giants. Teotihuacan period. During this era, the great city of Teotihuacan grew from a small village into a metropolis of great size and influence. Initially, Teotihuacan was a rival to another city named Cuquilco but when that community was destroyed by a volcano, Teotihuacan became dominant in the area. Archaeological evidence shows that Teotihuacan was an important religious center devoted to the worship of the great mother goddess and the plumed serpent, Kukulkan, also known as Gusamats, was the most famous Mayan deity. Classic period. 
The rise of the Maya began around 250 CE, and what archaeologists call the classic period of Maya culture lasted until about 900 CE. Post-classic period. At this time, the major Mayan cities were abandoned. To date, no explanation for the mass migration from cities to remote rural areas has been identified. The Toltecs, the new tribe in the region, took over vacant urban centers and resettled there. At this time, Tula and Chichen Itza became the dominant cities in the region. The widely held notion that the Maya were driven from their cities after the Spanish conquest is erroneous because the cities had been vacant before the Spanish invasion. The Maya were defeated at the Battle of Utatlan. At its peak, the Maya civilization included more than 40 cities, each with a population of 5,000 to 50,000 people. Among the main cities are Tikal, Chichen Itza, Huishaktun, Copan, Bonampak, Dos Pilas, Calakmul, Palenque, and Rio Beck. The Maya population peaked at 2 million people, most of whom settled in the lowlands of what is now Guatemala. Many Maya cities are now famous tourist destinations for their age and unearthed artifacts. Together, we will learn about some of the powerful and famous Maya cities of the past. Big City Zoo, Chichen Itza, ancient ruins of Maya city covering an area of 10 square kilometers in the central state of Yucatan, Mexico. It is said to have been a religious, military, political, and commercial center that, at its peak, and may have been home to 35,000 people. The site first saw settlers in the year 550, who probably came there because of easy access to water in the area through caves and sinkholes in limestone formations, known as cenotes. The only source of water in the Chichen Itza area is from cenotes, the two large cenotes on this site made it a suitable place for the city and gave it its name, from Chi Mouth, Cups a Well, and Itza, the name of the settled Mayan tribe there. Chichen was founded around the 6th century CE, probably by the Maya of the Yucatan Peninsula, who had occupied the area since the pre-classical period. The main early buildings are in the architectural style, known as Puk, which exhibits some differences from the style of the southern lowlands. There is evidence that in the 10th century, after the fall of the Maya cities in the southern lowlands, Chichen was invaded by foreigners, probably Mayan speakers. These invaders may have been the Itza people after whom the site is named. However, some authorities believe that the Itza people arrived 200 to 300 years later. In any case, the invaders were responsible for constructing large buildings such as El Castillo, a 79-foot pyramid above the main square. El Castillo has four sides. Each side has 91 steps and faces the main direction. Including the steps on the top platform, these steps combine for a total of 365 steps, the number of days in a calendar year. During the spring and fall equinoxes, the shadow created by the setting sun looks like a snake undulating up the stairs. The carving of a feathered snake atop the pyramid is the symbol of Quetzalcoatl, known to the Maya as Kukulkan, one of the main deities of the ancient Mesoamerican pantheon. Excavations inside the Nine Base Pyramid revealed another earlier structure containing a jade-encrusted red jaguar-shaped throne. A prominent place that cannot be ignored in Chichen Itza is the soccer field, where a game was held to choose who to sacrifice to the gods. The ballpark is 545 feet long and 223 feet wide, the largest in the Americas. Six sculpted bay reliefs line the walls of the field, seemingly depicting the game's winners holding the severed head of a member of the losing team. On the upper platform at one end of the courtyard is the Jaguar Temple, inside which is a mural of warriors besieging a village. Standing on the temple's podium on the north side of the courtyard, Whispers could be heard from 150 feet away. A legendary tradition in Chichen is the Cenote cult, which involved a human sacrifice to the rain god, Shak, in which the victim was thrown into the city's large septic tank in the northern or most part of the ruins, along with, with ornaments of gold, jade, and other valuables. In 1904, Edward Herbert Thompson, an American who bought the entire area, began dredging wells 
His discovery of skeletons and sacrifices confirmed this myth. Tikal, located in the northern Paten region of Guatemala, was a major Mayan city that flourished between 300 and 850 CE. The city, known to the Maya as Mutual, was one of the largest in Central America. One of the first Maya cities to gain prominence in the pre-classic period, Tikal built its wealth by exploiting its natural resources and geography to become a Maya superpower, a status which it also had when some of the first Maya cities became famous. Tikal consists of nine different squares and courtyards connected by causeways and ramps and has a total of more than 3,000 structures. The buildings are spread over an area of about 15 square kilometers, so the city has a relatively low density. Sometime before 250 AD, the Great Plaza and North Acropolis were built on a north-south axis. This plan was followed by later constructions up to the 8th century CE. Temples Y and II were built on an east-west axis. The buildings used limestone blocks around a rubble core with wooden lintels and crossbeams. Blue-pink is the preferred choice, often intricately carved to depict scenes. Besides majestic temples, the city also has palaces, a market complex, 10 water reservoirs, two sacred causeways, and a unique three-story ball court. Another typical Maya feature is the carving of stone tablets to depict rulers and record their greatest achievements. Such steles are placed in rows along both sides of the square. The oldest example of these stele in Mesoamerica was discovered at Tikal and dated to 292 CE. It shows a ruler holding in his left hand the underworld god Jaguar perhaps the patron god of Tikal. Tikal's prosperity was based on the exploitation of natural resources such as cedar, Brazilian wood dyes, copal resin, flint, and the cultivation of corn in cleared areas of tropical forests and fertile swamps. In 378 CE, Tikal was invaded by powers from distant Teotihuacan, or at least established trade contacts, and the resulting influence on cultural activities in Tikal from clothing to arts and architecture. Aided by the prosperity of Teotihuacan, Tikal further expanded its sphere of influence and conquered long-standing local rivals, Huaxactan and Rio Azul, and the city formed useful alliances with centers like Camina Juyu. Gradually, Teotihuacan's power declined and influenced other Maya cities. Caracol, in particular, was seeking military expansion and they defeated Tikal in 562 CE. However, by the 7th century CE, Tikal had regained its position as an important Maya city, at the same time as centers such as Palenque, Copan, and Tikal's greatest rival, Calakmul. The most important ruler in this rise was Jasao Chan Kawil, who defeated Calakmul in 695 CE. The most impressive new buildings are the giant pyramids, known simply as Temples Muduari and Oukai. Jasao Chan Kawil was buried at Temple Wan upon its completion in 727 CE. Other pairs of pyramids were built later, but most have yet to be excavated. During its heyday, Kalakmul was a powerhouse with over 50,000 residents, 6,700 structures, and various commercial areas. In Mayan, CA means two, lak means adjacent, and mul denotes any man-made mound or pyramid. So Kalakmul is the city of two adjoining pyramids. In ancient times, the city core was called Oxtetun, which means three stones. Kalakmul's southern location in the state of Quintana Roo places it in the heart of the Peyton Maya region. The inhabitants were influenced from both the north and south and belonged to a confederation that included the Maya settlements of El Mirador, Nagbe, and Washaktun in the Maya lowlands. Kalakmul is the largest and most powerful settlement in the alliance. This alliance often conflicts with its southern neighbors, especially Tikal located across the current Guatemalan border. Kalakmul is an architectural series with figures sculpted in stone and simulated in plaster. Kalakmul experienced its most prosperous period and began a series of renovations and installations of other public works that changed the image of the city. During this time, renovation work focused on the construction of monuments, 
known as Smooth Staley or Estelis Lisas, and were erected in the Great Plaza. Uh, the core of Kalak Mul covers an area of two square kilometers, an area containing the ruins of about 1,000 structures. The periphery is occupied by smaller residential structures in addition to the regional core of more than 20 square kilometers. Archaeologists have mapped some 62 YFD structures, but only those in the core area are open to the public. Kalak Mul is comparable to Taikal in size and estimated population, but appears to have greater density. During their existence, Taikal and Kalak Mul seem to have a not very good relationship as both always tried to become the most important city and dominate Maya. Therefore, there have been many wars between the two sides. Before Kalak Mul ascended the throne, Tikal was the dominant power in the region. Afterwards, the new dynasty established in Tikal was then influenced by Teotihuacan culture, mixed with Mayan culture. Tikal exercised significant influence over the countries of the region in ways that could set the stage for alliances in the tikal kalak Mul wars. Tikal and kalak Mul were then at war for many years and were divided into several periods. The first war from 537-572, the second war from 648-695, and the third war from 720-744. Ultimately, Tikal won and surpassed Kalak Mul to become the most important Maya city. Maya religion was an integral part of their culture, evident through numerous pyramids and temples they built to honor their gods. Maya religion is polytheistic, meaning they believe in multiple deities. Central to Maya religion is the concept of animism, a belief that all things, even inanimate objects, possess souls. The Maya term for the sacredness of gods is kuo. The life of the Maya was intertwined with agriculture, especially corn cultivation. For the Maya, corn was not only their staple food, but also a way to understand the world around them. One of the most important Maya deities is Hunhunapu, the corn god first mentioned in the Popol Vuh, one of their sacred texts. To understand the seasons, the Maya believed that during the planting season, the corn god would be reborn and then be decapitated after the corn was harvested. The Maya developed rituals to honor Hunhunapu to ensure a bountiful corn harvest as droughts would devastate their communities Additionally, they worshipped many other gods related to their daily lives, such as the god Itzamna, the founder of Maya culture, who taught his people to grow corn and cacao, and also instructed them in writing calendars and medicine. The rain god Chak, known in Maya mythology as the god of rain and thunder. The snake god Kukulkan, who taught humanity rules about law, agriculture, literacy, art, medicine, architecture, construction, hunting, fishing, and all other aspects of farming and civilization, management, and many other gods. The Maya performed rituals to honor the gods, seeking prosperous harvests. Blood was often part of Maya rituals, sometimes obtained by human sacrifice and animal or human sacrifice. Maya funerals were ceremonial and included cremation and burial as well as traditions of releasing coup. Many Maya rituals involve dance and elaborate costumes in hopes of attracting the attention of a specific deity. Below are three rituals performed by the Maya, human sacrifice. Human sacrifice wasn't a common ritual, but it was performed during wartime or to commemorate a life-changing event. Typically, war prisoners would be used as sacrificial victims and killed in one of three ways having the victim's heart removed while still alive, throwing the victim into a well, or death by decapitation. The Maya believed that this sacrifice would appease the gods of war and ensure military victory. Pocketok. This was a deadly ball game, also considered a sacrifice to the gods. The objective was to shoot a rubber ball through a hoop suspended on a wall, with players only allowed to use their head, shoulders, elbows or knees. It was an extremely challenging game, sometimes lasting for several days and ending with the death of the players. Say notes, it was believed that the gods lived in caves in the underworld, so children would be lowered into wells for hours in the hope that they would bring back a message from a god. Offerings to the gods were made in most Maya rituals. Archaeologists have found artifacts 
that are believed to be some of the items used in Maya religious rituals, such as currency. When burying the dead, the Maya often included money and jade to help their loved ones in the afterlife. Blood. As mentioned earlier, human sacrifice was part of Maya culture, but it was not the only way to offer blood for a ritual. Sometimes an animal would be sacrificed to honor or appease a god. Maya royalty also engaged in bloodletting to mark events such as births, deaths, or the coronation of a new ruler. Royalty would use special ritual tools to draw blood from various parts of the body to use in ceremonies. Whistles. In addition to currency, the Maya also buried whistles with the dead. Some believe that these whistles were used in funerals, while others believe they may have been buried to assist the deceased in the afterlife. The whistles are often carved into the shapis of animals, and prosy sounds similar to the animals depicted on the whistle. Bone paint. Long after a person died and was buried, their bones would be dug up to be painted. The Maya was sticking about a red mineral to paint the bones of their ancestors. Incensi. Incensi was often used in ceremonies, especially in weddings. Special festivals were major events where people would gather to watch plays, dances, and rituals performed by priests. Festivals included offerings to the gods, including bloodletting and sacrifice. Today, we can identify some of their famous festivals, such as Hanal Piksan. This festival, now known as the Day of the Dead, lasts from October 31st to November 2nd. The festival is still widely observed today. To remember deceased loved ones, the Maya will visit their graves and leave food offerings for the departed. Akritan. While detailed information about this festival has been lost, archaeologists believe it was the most significant festival of the Maya and occurred near the end of their solar year. Foods like turkey and corn were eaten during this commemorative festival, as well as cacao and honey from years. Papul Festival. This festival takes place in June to pray for rain for the Maya's harvest. Kill Darman, collect small animals, especially lizards, and place them in poteri. To simulate thunder, the pottery is smashed and the animals are released. The Maya civilization produced distinct artistic works and developed a fully elaborate writing system before the Common Era. Their creative abilities surpassed many contemporary cultures of the Old World. Archaeologists have unearthed a wealth of information about Maya civilization through the exploration and decipherment of Maya art and writing. Deciphering the knowledge gleaned from these primary sources often pushes scholars back in time regarding Maya innovations and achievements. A prime example is the discovery of Maya, writing from the pre-classic period on stones near San Bartolo. The humidity in most Maya regions has deteriorated books, painted buildings, and their artworks, much, seems to have been lost. And then archaeologists began to uncover beautifully painted murals and other artworks at the deepest layers of Maya architectural structures. The practice of constructing new architectural structures above and around older ones, often multiple times, has remarkably preserved the work in many cases. Maya art encompasses sculptures and decorations carved from stone, wood, clay and plaster, Elaborate carvings and jewelry were crafted from wood, obsidian, jade, bone, shell, and stone. Action scenes were depicted on pottery, murals, and bas-reliefs. Artists created cast objects, figurines, portraits of rulers, etc. Their tools included stone, obsidian, and jade carving implements, as well as paintbrushes. Maya, art paint was made from powdered pigments mixed with water, bound with clay. Color pigments were derived from berries, plants, fruits, minerals, and even insects. The Maya civilization had a special technique to create Maya blue, a deep turquoise color lost in the 16th century, sometimes during the Spanish conquests. Four cardinal directions were associated with colors in Maya art. Red symbolized the east, yellow the south, black the west, and white the north. The favored colors were blue for water, wind, and sky gods, while green represented vegetation and life. Only faint traces remain of the once vibrant colors on statues, monuments, temples, pyramids, residences, and miscellaneous artifacts. 
As archaeologists unearthed buried architectural structures and excavated within underground architectural features, they discovered well-preserved artworks and decorations from the Maya era. Scholars believe that royalty employed full-time artists during certain periods of Maya civilization. It is speculated that artists came from the upper class. The Maya civilization adorned its architecture with various forms of artwork. A typical city center featured accurately placed plazas, pyramids, adjacent buildings, and monuments, often plastered and painted red. Buildings and plazas were adorned with stone or brightly painted plaster carvings and sometimes mural paintings. A chance discovery by a diver in 1998 of an underwater Maya religious center led to archaeological investigations in 2007 of a submerged city at Lake Atitlan, Guatemala. Now known as Samabir, sometimes referred to as the Atlantis of Guatemala, it was a major religious center on an island in the lake before it was submerged, likely due to a volcanic eruption. It was frozen in Maya's pre-classic period, untouched by looters and undamaged by elements, leaving one to imagine undiscovered sculptures, pottery, and other magnificent artworks still waiting to be unearthed there. Some stunning murals have been discovered, excavated, and restored only in this century. These murals were painted on the walls of temples, public structures, and residences. The Bonampak murals depict scenes of daily life, warfare, rituals, mythology, etc., in vibrant or muted colors and employ excellent techniques to withstand the elements when protected. The Kalakmal murals include scenes from the everyday lives of the common people. The oldest murals at San Bartolo, discovered in 2001, depict scenes from mythology in the court. They date back to around 100 AD. Maya bas reliefs on lintels and door jams often contain figures and imagery. Examples of these can be found in some museums. The famous royal bloodletting scene known as Lintel 24, displayed at the British Museum, gives us a glimpse into the royal bloodletting ritual to appease the gods and assert the ruler's authority. Handcrafted clay utensils for daily use and burial goods have been present since the earliest pre-classic period. Ceramicists experimented with various techniques. By the late pre-classic period, they were producing monochrome pottery with intricate shapes, designs, and artistic flair in black, red, and cream colors. Similar to other ancient cultures around the world, Maya pottery began with simple clay vessels and evolved over time to include intricately decorated ceramics for various purposes, small figurines, and artistic objects. In the first century AD, creativity was expressed freely in style, decoration, and application, including beautiful small figurines. Storage vessels often featured exquisitely crafted animal motifs on their lids. Various tempering agents were used to enhance the elasticity and hardness of the clay. These included crushed limestone, grog, and volcanic ash. Objects were often coated with a slip or mineral water mixture before firing to enhance shine and color. Late pre-classic vessels included hollow whistles filled with pebbles that created sounds when carried or moved around. Colorful decorative items depicted court scenes and rituals, mythological scenes, deities and rulers painted and carved onto ceramics, sometimes with hieroglyphic inscriptions. The essence of Maya writing lies in the intricate images and symbols crafted by skilled artisans. Maya artists and scribes, or tazib, were the only ones capable of mastering their creation. Sites, altars, stelae, door lintels, staircases, and pottery often feature both artworks and inscriptions carved or painted onto them. There are 800 images and symbols in Maya writing. Some of these are used as syllables, while others represent entire words. Different symbols are sometimes used by different scribes for the same syllable, mainly due to variations in style and dialect. As one analyst put it, Maya scribes took great pleasure in their craft. Before a breakthrough in 1952, scholars attempted to decode Maya writing as a phonetic script, akin to English, French, Spanish, etc., following efforts in Spanish by Bishop Diego de Landa in the 17th century. Later, they realized that the pictorial characters in Maya script represent a combination of phonetic and syllabic elements. Much of the surviving Maya texts have been translated since then. Maya books are like codes, 
They made paper from the inner bark of the fig tree and folded it like a concertina. They used pens to draw images and symbols. Ink was made from water, thickened with clay, and added with colorants. For example, cochineal, insect for red and charcoal for black. The surface was prepared with white limestone dust mixed with water to create a uniform background. Maya writing was done in two columns forming two adjacent blocks per line and read from left to right and from top to bottom. Aside from numerous stelae, inscriptions on monuments, murals and other written records carved or painted on stone from the pre-classic to the post-classic period, only four pre-Columbian Maya codices remain. The Maya Codex. These are the Dresden Codex, Paris Codex, Madrid Codex and Grolier Codex. The Popol Vuh is one of the most important documents in the Maya corpus, but the only authenticated version is a copy made by a Spanish priest. All surviving codices are from the post-classic period, but are believed to be based on much older versions. The Dresden Codex has been housed in Dresden since the 17th century and is known for its highly accurate astronomical calculations and data. Its pages often contain images of a deity in action accompanied by descriptions of what it depicts. The Paris Codex, held in Paris, is fragmented. It contains information on Maya rituals, ceremonies, and commemorations. The Madrid Codex, housed in Madrid, is the longest of the four. It contains rituals, divination, sacrifices, including human, warfare, and Maya New Year celebrations. It also depicts scenes of beekeeping, weaving, hunting, and Maya gods smoking rolled cigarettes. The Grolier Codex, located in the Anthropology Museum in Mexico City, features frightening images of Maya deities on each page. It records the cycles of Venus. After careful examination and analysis, a paper published in 2016 confirmed the Grolier Codex as the earliest written document in the Americas. Carbon-14 dating placed the production of the paper in the 13th century AD. The oldest known Maya text discovered to date is near San Bartolo and dates back to around 300 BCE. It is much older than previous examples and is well structured in a complex format. Archaeologists acknowledge, upon careful examination, that the complexity of this black and white text in the Maya language indicates that the Maya did not borrow writing from other Mesoamerican cultures, but rather developed it independently. However, it must be acknowledged that the Olmec people, who preceded and coexisted with the Maya for a time, began developing their own writing system at some point. By around 900 CE, Maya writing and art and stone became scarcer as they preferred to write and draw on paper. Unfortunately, very few of these items survive today due to climate and Spanish conquest. During the pre-classic period, the Mayan invented calendars and glyphs. They used these glyphs to establish monuments and develop the architecture of this time to a high degree of sophistication. Before being invaded and eradicated by the Spanish, the Maya made five predictions about the future of humankind. The first prediction was about the emergence of airplanes, cars, and other tools in modern society. The second prediction was about the birth and death dates of Hitler. Then the third prediction stated that two world wars would occur. The fourth prediction was about the destruction of their civilization. And the fifth prediction was about the end of the world in 2012. The first four predictions were fulfilled, but there were no significant events in 2012. We safely passed through that year. Earth also underwent significant changes, leading people to doubt the Maya's predictions. The Maya calendar consists of three separate calendars, the Long Count, Didzolkan Sacred Calendar, and Hab Civil Calendar. Each cycle has a period, meaning a certain number of days must pass before a new cycle can begin. The three calendars are used simultaneously. The long count date comes first, followed by the Sulkan date and finally the Hab date. Hab is a solar calendar of 365 days, divided into 18 months, each with 20 days, and a remaining month of five days. It has an outer ring of Maya symbols representing each of the 19 months. Each day is represented by a number within the month, followed by the month's name. However, 
Hob is somewhat inaccurate because it is exactly 365 days long. A real solar calendar, the time it takes Earth to orbit the sun, averages about 3 c or 2019 days. The long count is an astronomical calendar used to track longer periods of time. The Maya called it the universal cycle. Each such cycle is counted as 2,000 days, about 7,085 solar years. The Maya believed the universe would be destroyed and then recreated at the beginning of each universal cycle. This belief led to the phenomenon described in 2012 and still inspires countless predictions about doomsday, the Solkin meaning distribution of days, also known as the sacred calendar, and Holy Round is a 260-day calendar with 20 periods of 13 days. I used to determine the timing of religious events and ceremonies. The days within each period are numbered from 1 to 13. The complexity of the calendar has puzzled the researchers, with some suggesting that, by extending the calendar's time to 20 sikhis of 800 nomri on a funerdays, about 45 years on Earth, a pattern emerges where the conjunction cycle of all planets observable from Earth will align with the 800 day calendar type. This means that the Maya observed the planets for nearly 45 years and then encoded it into a calendar type that has modern scientists scratch. During their peak, the Maya developed advanced agricultural methods. Their ancestors were hunters and gatherers, so they gradually adopted farming techniques to cultivate agriculture. Agriculture in this period, in Central America, seemed to be quite challenging. The hot tropical rainforest climate with heavy rainfall during the wet season and extreme dryness during the dry season pose significant difficulties. The almost non-existent rain led to issues with soil cultivation, making farming much more challenging compared to regions with less volatile climates. They had no supermarkets or food delivery apps. Everything had to be self-sufficient. Thanks to their extensive knowledge of astronomy and their calendar system, they could predict seasons and weather related to the life cycle of plants. This allowed them to track planting and harvesting times. Predictions based on the calendar led to advancements in agriculture such as intercropping and agroforestry practices. Another way the Maya achieved agricultural advancement was through their ingenious inventions. Thamicha people invented water reservoirs and water filtration systems. Archaeologists have found evidence that storing water during the rainy season for use in the dry season was an important agricultural technique of the Maya. They created water reservoirs underground, using stone to capture and store water, allowing them to use it for irrigation. Even more impressively, recent scientific discoveries reveal that at the Maya city of Tikal, they were also actively filtering water. While retaining water is one thing, maintaining clean water is a challenge, especially in ancient times when they did not have the scientific knowledge we have today. Evidence suggests that by placing a woven structure to trap crystals and volcanic rock at the entrance to the reservoir, the Maya could use rocks, quartz, and volcanic rock to remove impurities from the water. In fact, this agricultural technique of the Maya is the earliest recorded example of a water filtration system. This predated the era by thousands of years. Did they know slash and burn cultivation? Poor nutrient depleted soil was also a factor in stunting crop growth. The Maya had a clever solution. Soil in tropical forests has a thin top layer and often loses all its nutrients after two cultivation cycles. Maya farmers had to move to different land and the original fields were left fallow for at least five years. By the end of this period, Maya farmers were using slash and burn cultivation techniques. They cut down the plants grown for five years and then burned them to ash. This ash was rich in nutrients, especially phosphorus, and would provide the necessary pH for the soil to start cultivation again. Farming on terraced fields. Maya was not a city with vast flat land for farming. Here there seemed to be more hills and mountains, so they created long stretches of terraces. This arrangement helped retain water in small areas of land so that plants wouldn't lose moisture. The marshy areas were too wet for cultivation. The Maya built raised beds by lining woven mats underneath 
and then covering them with mud to retain more nutrients. This mud surface would be where seeds were planted with ample nutrients and water. So what were the staple crops of the Maya? Maya cuisine was incredibly diverse and rich, incorporating both maritime resources and plant and animal products. The Maya practiced intercropping multiple crops in the same field, with maize being the core food staple. Their diet focused on four domesticated crops, maize, squash, beans, and chili peppers. Some argue that cassava was easier to grow in Maya lands, but maize was revered for its prestige and perceived difficulty of cultivation. This proposal stems from the idea that maize alone couldn't meet the nutritional needs of densely populated Maya areas, whereas cassava could. However, evidence for cassava is scarce in archaeological records, although recent findings of volcanic ash at the southern Maya site of Joya de Caron in El Salvador might support this view. Various types of beans were also cultivated, including pinto beans, red beans, and black beans. Ancient Maya also relied on cultivating plants to access a variety of foods like tomatoes, chili peppers, avocados, breadnuts, guavas, mammy apples, papayas, pumpkins, sweet potatoes, and xanthosoma. Achia was grown for its green leaves, while chayotes were cultivated for their fruit, and their young shoots were used as greens. Many different herbs were grown and used, including vanilla, ipazote, akiote, and anatio seeds, canela, hoja santa, piper ariel tatum, avocado leaves, garlic vine, and pepper seeds. Farming techniques included terraced agriculture, raised fields, check dams, drainage fields, kitchen gardens, orchards, and various irrigation methods. Other crops have also been studied as part of the ancient Maya diet. Chili peppers, cassava, cotton, and sisal are believed to have been cultivated in nearby household gardens. Hunting is believed to have provided the primary source of meat for the ancient Maya, although some animals, such as dogs or poultry, may have been domesticated. Animals were hunted for meat as well as for other purposes, including deer, sea pigs, armadillos, tapirs, peccaries, monkeys, cotis, turtles, and iguanas. Most of the meat came from white-tailed deer as evidenced by animal bone remains found. The Maya diet was also supplemented by exploiting coastal areas with marine resources including fish, lobsters, shrimp, crabs, and various shellfish. In Maya culture, tamales are among the most beloved foods in the diet, made from corn dough filled with delicious options such as cheese and chili, pork, or chicken, they are then wrapped in corn husks or banana leaves and steamed. Once cooked, tamales are unwrapped and eaten often with a tasty salsa on top. Tamales are sometimes also made with sweet fillings like fruits or sweet corn. The Maya have made and enjoyed tamales as part of festivals and celebrations for many centuries, and they remain a favorite dish in Mexico during holidays, although they are made year-round. Originating from the Yucatan Peninsula, Pokchuk has been made from salt-preserved meat long before refrigeration was invented. It has a rich flavor due to the balance of slow-cooked salted pork and the tanginess of orange juice and vinegar, creating a truly special dish. Cilantro and sautéed onions complete it all, making Pokchuk a memorable dish when visiting this region. The Maya enjoyed various types of avocados, and they created the first version of guacamole by combining avocados with onions, lime juice, and spicy peppers. Many modern versions also incorporate ingredients like tomatoes, cilantro, and garlic. Aside from agriculture for food, there was another equally important industry, which was weaving. Weaving was an integral part of religious beliefs and art. Clothing also helped distinguish between the rich and poor classes in Maya society. Maya weavers primarily worked with cotton, a fabric that required washing and seed picking, a rather laborious task. Cotton was associated with wealthier individuals. The loose fibers were spun into yarn and woven together on a loom. Cotton was often dyed to create a variety of colors. Dyes were made from insects, animals with shells, minerals, or plants. Wealthy women would also incorporate feathers and pearls. Additionally, Mia women had to learn how to weave rugs and tapestries. 
The more elaborate patterns on clothing would signify their power and wealth. Maya men typically wore loincloths around their waist, sometimes paired with a sleeveless cotton shirt. However, their attire also depended on their tribal origins. For instance, if a man hailed from Palanque, he would adorn feathers on his hair or something to signify his identity. If he was from Tikal, he would paint his face blue and wear a hat with Tikal's colors. Women's attire was more intricate. They wore huipil, a wide, long blouse with openings for the head and arms, or a floor-length traje, held in place by a faja, or belt. Huipil and traje are still worn in Mexican culture today. Both men and women wore sandals, while farmers wore leather shoes. Many women kept long hair and braided their ponytails. Priests and nobles adorned themselves with decorative items such as jewelry made from jade, wood, or bone. In Maya civilization, a warrior was typically a man who wore a loincloth, similar to a large belt, and a cloak, a large cotton cloth with or without feathers. He would also wear a hat resembling a crown made of wood and painted in red, green, white, and gold. He would also carry a spear. However, Many hypotheses suggest that the scientific knowledge level of the Maya during that period enabled them to foresee natural disasters and have enough understanding of the adverse effects of deforestation to take preventive measures before catastrophes occurred. Evidence indicates the presence of numerous artificial water reservoirs lined with plaster to collect rainwater in the ruins of major cities. But why did the cities of the Maya decline mysteriously during this period? Was it solely due to natural disasters, or were there other mysterious entities involved? Similar to many theories about the impact of extraterrestrial civilizations, while the Maya civilization was flourishing and advancing beyond its time by around the first century, many Maya urban centers were abandoned. A prime example is El Mirador. The reasons for this collapse remain a mystery to this day. However, many hypotheses suggest that one of the reasons for the decline of these cities during the pre-classic period was deforestation. This decline was not sudden. It occurred gradually. The population dwindled, primarily due to deforestation. The tropical forest, which provided sustenance for the community, were irresponsibly cleared disrupting the balance of nature. As rainfall decreased, agriculture became unsustainable. To construct stone buildings, limestone mortar was needed to bind the stones together. Archaeologist Richard D. Hansen estimated that to build an average-sized pyramid, the Maya would deplete nearly 600 hectares of mature forest for firewood. Around El Mirador, there were over 30 pyramids and many other grand structures so it's no surprise at the extent of their deforestation. Clearing forests haphazardly for lime production not only filled the valleys with sediment that made them unsuitable for farming, but also depleted the dwindling timber supply, leading to exacerbated droughts. These impacts worsened over time. Rainfall decreased and dry seasons lengthened, resulting in insufficient harvests to sustain them. Consequently, for survival, the Maya had to abandon these great cities and seek livelihood elsewhere, leaving behind desolate urban centers. After the abandonment of urban centers in the central Maya region, this civilization entered the post-classic period around 950, marked by the superior development of northern urban centers and plateaus. New Maya city-states emerged, mainly along the Caribbean coast and the Gulf region. From here, new trade networks formed, and the Maya Empire began to thrive again with some changes in political structure, replacing the divine ruler throned God-King alliance with a feudal aristocracy. Architectural styles also evolved and became more sophisticated than the achievements preserved and developed from the previous two periods. Notable during this period was the city of Mayapan, a cultural and political center of the Maya. This city emerged in the northern Maya region after major southern cities like Tikal and Calakmul had declined. Mayapan was a confluence of palace complexes and vibrant ceremonial centers. 
Archaeologists estimate that Mayapan had about 4,000 buildings spread over an area of only about 4 square kilometers during this period. However, around 1448, Mayapan was abandoned after a period of turmoil. Political, social, and environmental upheavals followed. It was a period of warfare, disease, and prolonged natural disasters on the Yucatan Peninsula before the arrival of the Spanish in 1511. In 1511, a Spanish ship sank in the Caribbean Sea, and about a dozen survivors landed on the coast of Yucatan, which is now the territory of the Mexican states of Yucatan, Yacampech, and Quintana. They were captured by a Maya lord and sacrificed to the gods. However, two of them later escaped successfully. One of the two individuals, acting as an interpreter, aided Hernan Cortes, a Spanish conquistador, one of those who paved the way for Spain's colonization of the Americas to conquer the Aztec, a highly developed Central American civilization. In Central Mexico, during the late post-classic period, from 1517 to 1519, three separate Spanish expeditions explored the Yucatan coast. They encountered the Mayan Empire's armies after the Aztec capital, Tehuacan, fell to the Spanish. In 1521, Hernan Cortes sent a ruthless Spanish cavalry officer to Guatemala with 180 knights, 300 infantrymen, four cannons, and thousands of indigenous allies to conquer. By 1697, Martin de Ursua, a Spanish royal count, conquered Nopitan, the last independent city of the Itza, a branch related to the Maya civilization. The final independent city of the Maya collapsed after the Spanish arrived and ruled the Yucatan Peninsula with their ruthless regime. Within a century, the Maya population was only 1% of its heyday due to the extreme measures of the priests determined to eradicate the heresy. Tens of thousands of Mayan artifacts were hunted down and burned by the Spanish. Viewing them as idolatrous texts, the man who orchestrated the destruction of Maya culture was the priest Diego de Landa the governor of Yucatan, known for his cultural and linguistic destruction of the Maya people. Landa was born into a noble family and joined the Franciscan religion at the age of 17. His faith and zeal for religion were evident from an early age. He volunteered to be sent as a missionary to the New World. When he arrived in Mexico, Landa learned the Yucatec language of the Maya and tried to do charitable work to help the indigenous people mainly those who had perished from smallpox and famine. By 1552, he had become the head of the Izamal Monastery, the holiest healing site of the Maya. By 1561, Landa became the leader of a Roman Catholic Franciscan province. In this capacity, he advocated a series of brutal actions against the indigenous people, including imprisonment, enslavement, torture, and killing. In the past few months, about 4,500 Maya people have undergone unimaginable trials and tribulations. The souls and bodies of an entire community have endured tremendous trauma. Approximately 200 people have suffered painful losses, and the remaining ones have faced permanent consequences from the brutal torture methods. Although sympathetic to many aspects of Maya culture due to his time with them, the Maya customs, or rather rites, were too gruesome for Landa to accept. Night, anarati. Evidence of human sacrifice was found in 1562 in a Maya statue. Extensive cave systems still bear traces, and the remains of at least 28 bodies have been found here, with evidence of human sacrifice remaining in the form of occasional skull boxes hidden on high rock outcrops. He ordered the destruction of all 5,000 Maya statues and all historical books that the Maya had desperately protected. He was later appointed Bishop of the Yucatan Diocese by the Roman Catholic Church in 1572 to reward him for his achievements in eradicating heresy in the biblical evangelization of Central America. Since the 17th century, Maya culture has been completely destroyed, with only four incomplete versions of Maya script remaining, fortunately passed down to this day. Unlike previous genocides this time, the Maya nation was unable to rise under the brutal oppression of the Spanish for over 500 years. Accompanied by the racial discrimination policy of the white European ruling class. From here, 
Maya culture was destroyed after a short period. The ancient Maya people were almost extinct, and all the Ramoning few were sub to it and diversified. The Maya civilization collapsed around 900 AD, and we still don't know exactly why, although there are some clues. Environmental destruction due to overpopulation or prolonged drought, as well as the breakdown of violence in the overly complex hierarchical ruling system, are believed to be contributing factors. The highland cities of the Yucatan Peninsula lasted the longest. For example, Chichen Itza was inhabited until around 1250, with a large population of Maya still farming in the area when the Spanish arrived. In the early 1530s, the Spanish attempted to conquer the Yucatan Peninsula and established Chichen Itza as the capital under the name of Ciudad Real. They were ultimately besieged within the ruins of the city before being expelled in 1534. Only by recruiting a Maya army from other parts of Mexico were the Spanish finally able to subdue the region. Today, Mexico boasts around 200 Maya sites, but many ruins still lie buried under dense jungle or off limits to tourists as archeologists work to unravel their secrets. The most visited site is Chichen Itza, the largest Maya city in Mexico home to the iconic Kukulkan Pyramid, a major attraction. With 364 steps on each side, plus the top platform, it creates 365 days in a year. It was dedicated to a serpent deity adorned with the iridescent feathers of the nearly extinct Quetzal bird, sacred to the Maya. During the spring equinox, the pyramid's shadow creates the illusion of a snake slithering down the staircase. Tikal today stands as one of the largest archaeological sites and urban centers of the pre-Columbian Maya civilization. It is located in the archaeological region of the Paten Basin in present-day northern Guatemala. Situated in the El Paten department, the site is part of the Tikal National Park in Guatemala and was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1979. South of it, Excaret is Tulum where the stunning clifftop backdrop has made it an icon for Mexican tourism. Its ancient Maya name, Zama, meaning dawn or morning, was built facing the rising sun. Coba, located about 30 minutes from Tulum by car, sprawls over a vast area taking hours to explore, with about 6,500 architectural structures lost in the jungle landscape. At its peak, from about 400 to 1,100, it was one of the largest Maya cities and home to 50,000 residents. Palenque marks the western extent of the Maya and boasts an impressive mountainous backdrop rising from the lush jungle. A medium-sized city lasting until the 9th century, its hieroglyphic inscriptions have provided a clear picture of its history and relations with neighboring city-states. The Temple of the Inscriptions preserves a series of hieroglyphic texts now housed in the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City. Entered inside with abundant jade offerings is Pakal, the ruler responsible for much of the city's construction. Uxmal features the magician's pyramid with its unusually round face and intriguing rainwater harvesting system. This area lacks rivers or streams and the rain god Chak is a crucial deity here. The exceptionally well-preserved ceremonial center, which continued to develop long after the collapse of Tikol and Palenque, offers visitors insights into its form and function into the late 9th and early 10th centuries. Places like Ixcare offer opportunities to experience Maya culture and attire, but the Maya are also around you when you travel in Mexico. They reside in easily visible places, especially in the Yucatan Peninsula, including the states of Yucatan, Campeche, and Quintana Roo. Yucatan has the highest indigenous population ratio in any Mexican state, 59%. This peninsula remains isolated from the rest of Mexico, and over a million people still speak Yucatec Maya. Spanish spoken here is also characterized by explosive consonants of Maya. Indigenous students are now taught by bilingual teachers, a policy proven to reduce dropout rates and improve Spanish language skills. The Maya still adhere to ancient gods and rituals within local Catholic churches heavily influenced by ancient beliefs. The power of the old gods over rain, love, or death 
easily transferred to the new saints of Catholicism, while the story of the resurrection is familiar to those with a close connection to the earth and its deities through agriculture. Visiting a church in Amaya community, it's not uncommon to see a chicken being sacrificed in a ceremony perhaps older than Christianity itself. Thank you for listening. What do you think about the stories of the Maya? Leave a comment below to let me know. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to support me. See you in the next videos.